have to tell you, kind of excited about these, this particular problem or these problems coming up. They're just a little bit different than what we've done before, and it's just nice to do something different sometimes. So what I have here is the theorem. Okay, so this this is actually the theorem. The algebra we're going to do is what's called the Lagrange multipliers. But the theorem says if you've got two functions and one of the functions we're trying to find either the maximum or the minimum. That's an M right there. And the thing is, it's not just any old problem. It, it, it has a condition. They call this a constraint, but you could also call that a condition. And you guys all remember what this is called? That is the Greek letter lambda. A. It is a scalar in this problem. It's a multiplier. It's a number. And this, of course, is gradient. So, if you take the gradient of the two functions, they're equal to each other, meaning these are two vectors that are parallel off by just a multiplier. And it turns out that this is the basis of an equation to solve that just uses algebra. It doesn't use calculus after we've taken these derivatives. So I want to show you a problem that I first saw, I don't know, it might be 35 years ago now. It's a long time ago now. So I, like before I was born even. And that problem um, I think was related to how packages were were charged for shipping a long time ago like even 20 or 30 years before this my first experience um, it's not algebraically as difficult but it lets you see several different aspects of this at once so the idea is that we're going to find the maximum volume of a box okay and we're talking about a rectangular box okay and the condition is the sum of its length and girth is, well, how should we do this? Should we make it nice or should we make it not nice? Let's just put a number here, 100 inches. Sorry folks, it's not written in metric, but it shouldn't change the, the aspects of the problem. So there's a term here you might not be familiar with, girth, but uh, let me just give you a visual. All right, here's the end of the box. Here's the rest of the box here. So there's a length here. There's a length. And this is a rectangle here. It may not have the same, so we, we could use all sorts of variables. I could use, um, uh, how do we want to do this? I mean, I could call this X and Y and Z if you want to feel like you're in algebra class, or you could use length, width, and height, or other uh, symbols as you feel fit. So what this says is the girth the girth is actually how big around is the box. So it would be like the perimeter of this rectangle at the end. So the girth would be in this case 2x plus 2y. And the length would be 
z. And the method of pricing on the shipping was so long as this thing was 100 inches or less then the price would be a certain amount and as soon as that was more than 100 inches they would charge you a different amount. So we're talking about a long ago method for measuring. I think the modern day shipping uh, companies have much more complex uh, recipes for this. Now first thing I want to show you is this is the condition what the formula calls a constraint it's the volume I'm trying to find the biggest well how do we find the volume of a box Well, volume is um, well x times y times z that's pretty straightforward now please note, I've got all kinds of exciting little tidbits here. We appear to have three variables. So this formula can apply into three variables. I have a constraint and I also have my, my, uh, my function I'm trying to find the maximum of. So this is my function f here and this here is my function g if I'm looking at the formula directly. So let's transcribe this to uh, something we can solve. All right, give me just a moment here. Okay, so we have volume, a function of x, y, and z is equal to x times y times z. We have g of x, y, and z, which is my constraint or condition is 2x plus 2y plus z and that's equal to 100 a constant okay so there are my functions I'm working with and according to this problem that we will find the maximum when the gradient of the volume is equal to the gradient of this condition or constraint multiplied by some scalar. If this is 2, you can move it to this side and call it 1 half. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a scalar. It's an, it's an equation. So let's find these two gradients. Okay, first thing we have to find the gradient which would be the x derivative, the y derivative, and the z derivative equal to lambda the x derivative, the y derivative, the z derivative. Okay? The x derivative of this function, well derivative of x is 1 leaving me y times z. The y derivative will be, that's right, x times z. Now you fill in the z derivative before I do. Good. x times y equals lambda times, oh, what is the x parcel derivative here? Well, that's right, it's 2. The y derivative is also 2. And the z derivative? Well, that's correct, it's 1. Now, this is where the calculus ends, and we will switch to sort of algebra gear. Now, watch this. I've just created three little equations. The x components are equal, the y components are equal, the z components are equal. So I have y, z equals. 2 lambda. I have xz equals also 2 lambda. I have xy equals lambda. Now, before you let yourself get into autopilot and try substitution or other little tricks, let me show you something. 
how many variables are here? We have X, we have Y, we have Z, we have Lambda, that is four. There are only three equations. To solve a system for four variables, you need a fourth equation. Well, we happen to have a fourth equation. It's right here. It's our condition. 2x plus 2y plus z equals 100. So what I'm going to do is show you how to simplify this mess here use it in our condition or constraint and actually solve for the box that has the biggest volume. Here we go. If we look at these two, I see that yz is equal to xz because they're both equal to 2 lambda. So that means, that means, therefore, that y and x will be the same when we're finished. On the picture, there's a very specific meaning of that, and we'll put that on the picture before we're done. Now, let's see here. Let's go back to this. Let's look at these two. yz equals 2 lambda y z equals 2 but there it says that lambda is equal to x y so y z equals 2 x y z equals 2 x so I have y equals x and z equals 2 x now we're going to take this and this and we're going to go to our condition, our constraint. So I have 2x plus 2 but y equals x plus z but z equals 2x and that equals 100. 6x equals 100, x equals 100 divided by 6, or 50 divided by 3. Now, it's entirely possible that you just forgot what we were doing. Maybe you forgot what we were doing. All right. We have this box. Let's come up here so you can see it. There we go. We want to find the maximum volume. Well, that happens when x is 50 over 3 and y is equal to x so it will also be 50 over 3 and z will be equal to 2 times x which would be 100 over 3 and I think if you find if you add them all together um, uh, the, the girth and the um, length you will get the 100 and if you just need the dimensions then you would have 50 thirds inches by 50 thirds inches that's 50 by 100 thirds inches if you want the volume you would multiply them all together let's see what is that 2500 25,000 is that 250,000 over 3 cubic inches? No, that's way too small. It's way too big, I should say. Well, you'd multiply them together. Look at that. I got caught without the answer. 
I changed the numbers at the beginning of the problem just so I was having some fun also. If you want to know that solution, you could use a calculating device, you could do some mental math. It's lots of fun. That would be the volume in terms of cubic inches for this box. The fun part is the algebra and answering the question and maybe sometimes writing the two functions. Maybe sometimes writing the two functions. So stick around. I'm going to show you a different type of problem where you have to be a little bit creative in writing the functions at the beginning. So come check it out.